Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 2. Listen to what the king said in verses 47. I kind of like raised my eyebrow at that last week, but I didn't, I didn't expand on it, but I, I really want to expand on it a little bit more today. So here is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is a heathen king. Nebuchadnezzar knows nothing about God. Nebuchadnezzar is a real historical figure. Nebuchadnezzar is really the king of a great kingdom, a, a, a conquering empire uh, by the name of the Babylonian Empire. He's a real person. The people in the Bible are not, are not fake people. The names in the Bible, they're not fake names. And believe it or not, whether you accept it or not, many historians and many um, archaeologists and historians, they use the Bible as a reference often time because they know that, well, it's a good way to prove it wrong, at certain era and times that the Bible speaks about, they're very accurate. The Bible is very accurate as a historical record of who it was, what kingdom it was, what came after what. It does not make those mistakes. It does not make mistakes in terms of history. Okay. So you can, so you can trust the Bible in, uh, in, in those sort of terms. So this great king who does not know God, who had no, no Jewish experience, he had no exposure to Judaism, Judaism is the one true religion. It's the only religion where there is only one God and only that God alone. And there is no other mini gods or there is no higher God or lower gods. It's only one God. There is no equal to him. There's none above him and there's none below him. He's, only, he's the only one. There's only one. Ever said there's only one God. So knowing this, God begins to introduce himself as the one God to Nebuchadnezzar. He begins to, if you want for a better word, he begins to educate Nebuchadnezzar. He begins to educate him. This is the beginning of Nebuchadnezzar's education. And I want to preach the message tonight. If it's, it's a weird title, I'm sorry. Yahweh University. Or University of Yahweh. I'm a uni guy. So, I understand what uni means. Uni is, is, a, is a step up, I think so, maybe not for some people. Uni is a, is a step up from high school, right? It's a, and, and, and high school is a step up from elementary school, right? So it got more and more difficult. Well, when you're in Yahweh University, that's as high as it's going to get. At university, you can do your PhD, your doctorates, whatever. But, you know, you got to go to an institution of higher learning. Yahweh University is an institution of higher learning that God... You don't, you don't apply for it. <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't apply for it. God comes and grabs you and, and, and brings you in. <laughs> and when he brings you in, you dare not leave. Don't quit. It's a, it's a, it, is a, it is the best education you've ever had. And so God comes along and God grabs uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and says, Hey, you're going to Yahweh University, boy. My friend, you're going to go to Yahweh University. You're, you're, uh, you're going to be a graduate. You're going to be a PhD when I get through with you. And so, he introduces himself and he begins to augment his education. And as you see, God's encounter with Nebuchadnezzar, it is a learning, it is a teaching. You see, oftentimes we look at it as God trying to teach us, but I tonight, I want to focus on the fact that God's trying to teach the king. Uh, I believe God loved Nebuchadnezzar. I believe that God wanted Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, a real historical figure that God wanted him to be saved. I believe that God came into his life and brought Daniel into his life. And Daniel, very respectfully, as we spoke about before, began to um, initiate him into the, things, uh, into the way of God. And so as he begins to, to begin to reveal God to him, you know, God begins by showing him a series of dreams. One dream in particular in which uh, the king doesn't know uh, what he dreamt because, you know, he dreamt something and forgot about what he had dreamt. Just to help those who are not familiar. Um, and he forgot the dream and, and God told the prophet the dream and not only told him what the dream said, but what the dream meant. And that's impossible for anybody to go into your mind, in your subconscious mind, because we dream in an in a unconscious state. We don't even know why we're dreaming it. And for somebody to go into your unconscious mind and to tell you what you dreamt and then to interpret it. And the king was like, that's exactly what I dreamt. 
That's, and that's exactly what it meant. That's amazing. So the king now realizes that God has the power to give you dreams. Elementary. Everybody say dreams. dreams. Is, Is. Elementary school. Elementary. Yeah, don't make a big deal about it. I dream, you dream. It's no big deal. It's elementary school. I have never heard anybody boast about graduating elementary school. Anybody? Excuse me? Hey, I passed year six. <laughs> no one does. Dreaming is elementary school. You got to go to high school next. And you think you know a lot when you're in elementary school because when you, when you graduate, uh, you know, you're six. How old are you? Twelve. You're 12. You, you know everything, right? At 12, most 12 year olds, they don't, they don't need me to teach them anything. Your 12 year old knows more than you because, you know, he, he watches uh, YouTube information things so they can teach you, right, Jaron? <laughs> I remember driving to, 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 to school with Jaron, and uh, that was when Jaron used to watch a lot of stuff, you know? And Brother George, he would be ripping off numbers and not, you know, what star is going to be this and that. And he's, he's like, all these numbers. I'm like, how do you learn anything in school? Like, you have so much information in your head that you learn from all these things you've watched. Where do you have space to put the stuff they teach you at school? But then he stopped watching so much information stuff and left some more of his, you know, his brain open. But at 12 years old, every, every kid thinks they know everything at 12, 13 years old. They can, they can do that, they can do that. Okay. You're in elementary school. Dreaming is elementary school. Supernatural, yes. You've learned something, yes. It's terrific, yeah, but it is the baseline. It is, it is, don't make a big deal about your dreams because your dreams should be catapulting you to the next stage. If, if you can dream, then don't stop at dreaming. I think a lot of people dream, and yes, the Bible says, yes, you know, they shall dream dreams, and that's, that's true. But there are also many other things that you can do in God and not just dream, because dream is one of our first supernatural contacts with God, but it ought not to be your only one. You, God wants to empower you beyond just to dream. It's wonderful to dream, but it's still elementary school. Elementary, my dear Watson. It's elementary. So he says this. He makes a mistake, and I, I, I noted it and didn't comment on it, but it took on significance this week. In Daniel chapter 2, verses 47, after Daniel had revealed it, verses 46, he makes a couple of mistakes. Then the king, then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel. First, uh-oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Hey, king. You see, I, I, didn't, I didn't talk about it last week. I just left it alone. Here's a king worshiping the man. He's a, he's a polytheist. He doesn't understand who God is. So anything can be worshipped. Everything can be worshipped. He has been, he has been um, schooled or his culture has taught him that there, there can be many gods. While Daniel said there's only one capital G-O-D, he believes in many G-O-D-S plurality. But there is no plurality in God. So, <clears throat> the king fell upon his face and commanded and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation or sacrifices and sweet odors unto him. Let us worship him. Literally, he's about to worship the man who brought him the vision. Why is that? Yes, God has now educated him in that God has revealed himself to him, but he still don't know nothing. He still doesn't understand how much more he has to go, how much more he has to learn. And you know, oftentimes I think we can become content with the fact that, wow, I dreamt something and it was real. I say to that, and, I, and Brother George, don't, don't get me wrong, big deal. That's, that's elementary school. In apostolic Christianity, that is elementary school. It's no big deal. You do, that's great, but don't think it's a big deal. We dream, we dream awesome things. And, it's, and many people in the church dream things. They come to me, Pastor Robert, this, that, like, oh boy, okay. <laughs> Coolest dream. I'll give you an example. Just so I just say, well, we have dreams. Coolest dream. There was a young lady who wanted to send her children to a particular school that was called the Montessori. And the Montessori has a specific kind of education system. Has anybody ever heard of the Montessori school? Okay, well, most people haven't. This one particular guy did not. And um, 
<clears throat> one day, he went to bed, and he had a dream. And the person in the church that wanted to send their children to the Montessori school, he dreamt, he's like, okay, I'm gonna give him away. He drives, uh, he, uh, not necessarily, he drives garbage trucks for a living. Oh yeah, now everybody know, yeah. Maybe it's Troy, you don't know. Could be Troy, you don't know. <laughs> Terry. And so he says, you know, Rob, I was driving by a school, and I drove by, I saw a sign on the school that said, Montessori. He goes, I've never heard of Montessori. But they had all this garbage in the garbage can. <laughs> that was bread, but it was junk. <laughs> it was rubbish. And he goes, I don't know what a Montessori is, but why would I dream that they had junk in a garbage can <laughs> with a Montessori? So I'm like, oh, really? And it, and it was at the exact same time that this person was about to put their kids into the Montessori. So, I said, because I don't want everybody going to run into, because not only did he dream about the Montessori, you know, he, he got, he got some, some things pretty specific. I said, listen, go to that person and tell that person what you dreamt. I like when you dream in church for you to come to me and say, Pastor Robert, I dreamt this. I don't want you going here, 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 tell about your dreams. I don't want, or I said it in church, I repeat it over and over again. It is destructive, and you can do a lot of damage with a very good dream if you don't know how to handle it. So everything that's power, every type of power must be managed properly. And if you don't manage it properly, it's like, I dreamt that the Lord got rid of you. <laughs> yeah. Deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm getting a phone call. Pastor Robert, yeah, someone dreamt. They saw me in hell. <laughs> okay, so we don't want to do that. I said, Terry, go and tell the person. And Terry went and told the person, listen, Montessori, garbage, connection, don't go there. And that person said, okay, I won't go there. And their husband was very happy because it saved him tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Because, it's very, because it's, it's very expensive to go to the Montessori to learn their garbage. Real dream. We have many more. No need to tell them all. This is Zion. We dream. The Lord said, so that, that's, that's elementary. But, he, but just because you can dream, it doesn't mean you know the mysteries and the deep things, or even the true power of God. It doesn't just because you dream, don't be, yeah, I can dream. It doesn't mean you know the true power of God. And God, God wants to reveal his true power to you. And that's why when he, you start to dream, good. Now let's go to, let's leave elementary school. Let's go a little bit higher now. Let's go to high school. Let's move. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, unless you say, Pastor Robert, you know, I don't agree with that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6, and let's see what he says. 6 verses 1, yeah. I need you to um, forget everything. He says what? Therefore, Christian, Christian believer, therefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. He said, leave them and go on. Why? This, just because you reach one stage in your, in your relationship with God, it doesn't mean that your divine education is finished there. Brother George, just because you got to a certain... doesn't mean your divine education is going to go on and it has to go on in deeper and deeper ways and on, in shocking ways until you're amazed at what God can reveal to you or use you to do. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, or of faith towards God, or of the doctrine of baptism, or laying of hands, or the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God so will. So he's saying, let's, let, let's leave the first principle of the doctrine. You know, if, 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 if all of us here can dream, that, we, we only need one person to dream. We, we need somebody else to go on. <laughs> we, 
We need to get to higher places in God where the power of God can manifest itself through us and we're not just happy at this one level. You understand that? Even in the word, I, have, I, am, I, am, I am a man right now, I, Brother George, I am in Yahweh University. I am always in Yahweh University and God has to keep revealing himself to me more and more. I am in Yahweh University. And you are in Yahweh University as well and God has to reveal himself to you more and more. So in the Old Testament time, God, in the New Testament, Yahweh University is this. Do you know if you go to Curtin University, University of WA, you've got a lecturer, he gets up front, he has a textbook, and he teaches you out of it, or from his experiences, he teaches you and you learn from a professor. And the professor teaches you from his experiences, and you take notes and write down, and he teaches you, and you go and apply it in business world or uh, scientific world or whatever, uh, you know, whatever um, sort of business or um, health. Uh, what are you taking, Jermaine? Health? How is uni going? Yep, all right. It's, and, and, and guys, university is a place where you are learning the mysteries about something. So in the Old Testament time, that's not the only way to work, to learn. So in the New Testament time, God teaches us primarily, he teaches us with the book, and then we go to experience what the book says. But in the Old Testament time, there was no book. So yes, so Brother George, in order for you to experience it, you must first believe it. You understand that? So first you have to, you, you, God tells you something, he reveals it to you, you experience, you believe what he's revealing to you, now you can go on to do things in Christ, do things in God. But in the Old Testament, there was no real book as such. And, and, and certainly, you know, in the environment in which Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel were dwelling, it was, it was going to be God teaching from experiences, and then we're going to gleam and we're going to learn from what he's teaching them, Yahweh University. So, Elementary school, chapter 2. High school, chapter 3. Oh, oh, can I read what he says? Can I read what he says? He, so he worships him. Then verses 47. The king <clears throat> answered and said, Daniel, of a truth, it is, it is that your God is a God of... That's wrong. Why is that wrong? If, if you have been to Yahweh University, why is that wrong? Because he's not a God of gods, he is God. He shouldn't have said of gods. And when he said of gods, the ire of God went, hmm. Of gods? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> are you limiting me to a God who just gives a bunch of dreams, are you? Because, you see, that puts me at the level of the other gods as well. Do you think that's all I can do? You see, if, if you think that's all and what you experience, if you think that's all, that's why, guys, it, it, is, it is good for you to get deeper and deeper into God, get more and more of the Holy Ghost, and say, God, use me for more. Show yourself and reveal yourself through me. I want to be able to do more. Don't fake anything, but let God use you for more and more. Yahweh University. Teach me. Teach me how to do this. You know, there are some men that were called the apostles. And Christ says, you, follow me. Why? I'll make you fishers of men. You, follow me. Why? They didn't know, but at that point, they were being recruited to go to? To, to Yahweh University. Why is the, and who was the professor? Jesus. God himself. Do you know what the word Moriel means in Jewish? God is my teacher. Moriel, God is my teacher. So when God is your teacher, you're in uni. Because God does not, the Bible says, don't be babes. No, it's to be a babe. It means you're in elementary school. He's actually kind of insulting you. Nora, you're a babe. You're... You know, you can only, what's two plus two, Nora? You know, like, really? Two plus two? Don't get it wrong, by the way. Just don't need that answer. I forgot the stress. If you are 
a babe in Christ, he doesn't expect you to know a lot. And Jesus doesn't put a lot on you because you, you can't graduate. You can't handle big things. <laughs> when you're a babe in Christ, God can't put on you heavy burdens because you'll fall beneath them. You can't handle them. He can't put you through deep trials like he did to Job. You're a baby. And in Yahweh University, you go through trials. And God shows himself to be real. He does amazing things. He's like, wow, I never saw that happen. And didn't say that was going to come. But he does. But in Yahweh University, it, it is both vocational, but also it's hands-on as well. But you learn from experiencing. And that's a, that's a very important part of learning, where you actually get into the workshop and you do this. I think in, in, in school, they have what's called? Hands-on is what? Prac, or you have labs? Labs? You go and actually mix the things, and, and, and you need to do that as well. There's, there's two ways to learn. Okay. So in Yahweh University, God has dragged Nebuchadnezzar into the lab. Nebuchadnezzar is a great king. And he knows there's a God. But because he's still convinced that there can be many gods, just because you, <laughs> hey, just because you can give a dream and interpret a dream, it doesn't mean that you should get all the praise, right? <laughs> I mean, that's not sufficient. So then he goes on to chapter verses 3. He exalts him, yes, but he, but he makes a lot of pluralistic, polytheistic mistakes in his worship. And you as a Christian, hey, hey, by the way, you as a Christian, if you're, if you're worshiping a pluralistic, polyistic God, so if you're a Trinitarian, for example, and you believe that there are three persons up in heaven called God. And you're, if you watch this, you're like, oh, Father, oh, we just pray to you, Father, through your Son, Father, and we thank you, Father. Okay, now time to pray to the Son. Son, we just pray to you, Son, thank you for obeying the Father to come when he told you to come. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for indwelling us, and Holy Spirit, tell the Son to tell the Father that's elementary. One day, Molemba was praying. And when she was praying, in her brain, she was praying to the Father. And she testified of that here. And she says, I because she's in Yahweh University. When you are in Yahweh University, you begin to understand who Yahweh is and, and how Yahweh is to be worshipped. Because... Yahweh University is a theological seminary where the deity of Yahweh is manifested and he makes himself known to you. So as she is, as, as, as she is, as, as she is, as she is um, reading, or she's praying to, 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 to the Father, something says to her, who do, you, who do you think you're talking to? She was asked that question because she was not praying to Jesus. She was praying to the Father in her mind. And, 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 she, and she said to herself, well, I, I, I've always prayed like that. I mean, who am I praying to? I'm praying to the Father through the Son, by the Spirit. I mean, isn't that how you pray, right? But, 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 her, but at Yahweh University, she knew that Jesus is God and that God has come to earth as a man and when God came to earth as a man and the word was made flesh not that God stopped being God but God began to take on flesh so Jesus could say so in the Old Testament Yahweh said go and tell them I am has sent thee but when he came as Jesus he said before Abraham was I am. And when he came as Jesus, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, you've seen Yahweh. So to the, he was asking, who do you think you're, you're talking to? Because obviously in your prayer, you're not praying to Jesus. We well, say nice words, but you're not talking to me, to Jesus. Because if you understand who Jesus is, you understand that when you, when you, when you, when you're facing Jesus, you know who went to Yahweh University? Who went to Yahweh University? John, no, Thomas went, let's, let's, go, let's go there, since I'm there, in the book of John, a man called Thomas. Thomas went to Yahweh University. Huh? And Paul. and Paul, yes he did. Yes he did, yes he did. Well, <laughs> he, got, he, got, he got smashed up first because 
Yawa University, sometimes you know, some, a lot of stuff happened there at uni. <laughs> That's a scary uni, by the way, eh? If you get in, man, wow, you, you're doing well. Uh, John chapter 20. And this, look at this, look at this. He says this. Thomas said, I'm, I just resurrected Jesus. So I'm not going to believe anything. Verse 27. Then said Thomas, then said he to, to Jesus to Thomas, reach hither your finger and behold my hands and reach hither your hands and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, who is the him? Jesus. And he said what? Adonai Elohim. He calls him my Lord and my God. That man has been to Yahweh University because you know you've been to Yahweh University when you graduate and you start seeing Jesus as Yahweh. When you start seeing Jesus as Yahweh or you start, you start understanding that Isaiah chapter 9 and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor he, he was born, he, he was born, but he was called what? The mighty God. How is that possible? How can a man who is born be the mighty God? And how can he be the? When he was the son that was given. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That's Yahweh University. That's just, some of the, that's just part of the text of Yahweh University. Oh, and by the way, by the way, holiness is a part of Yahweh University as well. That's a, that, he, he teaches that as well. You don't learn that everywhere. Not everybody teaches that, but at Yahweh University you do. The, ch the church is a, it's a part of it, but the church is on all of it. It's, we teach you the fundamentals, and you and God have your experiences. Okay. But you, you're going to need that. So let's go back to Daniel again. Daniel chapter 3. Now, here is Daniel now manifesting. Shh, shh, shh. Thank you. Here is Daniel now manifesting is, is madness. It's, it's, it's full polytheism. Here is Daniel now. Uh, sorry, Nebuchadnezzar. Now, you notice that, guys? Notice I've written all these things down. Notice I don't need to use my paper. Because at, at Yahweh University, the lecturer does not lecture from a paper. But thank God for I can write things down. But in Yahweh University, the lecturer is inspired by God. The lecturer is inspired by God to speak. The, Brother George, just like you, but I don't need to, I, I write things down, but I don't need to write it down because when I get to the pulpit, it shouldn't be me teaching you. It should be the spirit in me. It's, if, if, if it's me and my education and all I learned in my, in my years of Bible college, if I come with all that experience from a Bible scholar, I cannot come to a pulpit and call it Yahweh University if I'm teaching you what I've learned in college. I have to teach you what the Holy Ghost is revealing. And tonight, I, I haven't learned this anywhere. I'm just telling you what. Tammy, we're on, a, we're on our way down to the farmhouse today. And as we're going down, have a read of that, Tammy. Okay, let's call it this, and let's call it that, and let's put this together. And simple as that. Sufficient for the night. Nebuchadnezzar the king not anybody else, it was him. Nebuchadnezzar the king made, everybody said Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. the king. king. What did he do? King. Why did he do that? He's, he's a pagan and he's used to gods, plural. But, but, but Naomi, but Naomi had this great dream from Daniel. Well, what a fantastic dream. He should be like bowing down to Yahweh, right? Sorry, the dream isn't sufficient. The dream is not sufficient. And, and, and guys, no dream on its own is going to make you serve God. There has to be more substance to your experiences with God than just a dream. But dreams are very important. But don't run around the place just looking for who dreamt what and relying on them. Just don't do that. You're in Yahweh University. That's just the first part. Yes, okay, I can dream. Lord, now what? That's how it works. That's how it works in the church. You have to understand that. You know? My mother, Brother George, great dreamer. <laughs> I go somewhere in the world, and my mother's telling me where I'm staying, what the room looks like. She's telling me. She sees it. 
My friend Wayne and I, when we were kids, come my mother could always dream. My friend and I, when we were children, we found a purse near a bridge. Nice, thick purse with hundreds and hundreds of dollars in it. And there was a lady who was a landlord of a building and she had collected everyone's rent. Kind of like the Susu lady. And she has $20,000 worth of Susu money and she's talking to her friend and having a good time and she's walked away and left. She's left all that money there Scamper along, me and Wayne, we find everything. We're like, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, this is good. Before the living God, I lie not. Wayne is counting them out, shelling me some. My other friend, Keith, yeah, we're divvying it up. And because, you know, we need a skateboard, we need a bike, we need this. All the glorious things which our poor mother could not, the Lord has provided some, you know. And, <laughs> And we were, we were, I brother George, I was only like maybe 16 or 17 years old. And then in the middle of it all, as we're divvying it up, I promise you before God, my friend thought we were so strange. I'm like, hang on, Wayne. Wayne, hang on. Like, I know the money's scratching my hand too, you know. I'm like, Wayne, mama's going to dream it. You know she's going to dream it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Sister Rose is going to dream it, man. He knew too. The other guy's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, no, we know these people and they're insane. And they're dreaming things that they shouldn't be dreaming. And they're gonna know. <laughs> but the joy, I mean, things are just like, she shouldn't know that. Why is she saying that to me? But she did. Before the living God, she dreamt really good. Really good. And I said, put it back, give it back, and let's go and give it to the authorities or give it to mom more. And we did. We were so afraid of her dreaming it. Before the living God, we were so afraid of that that we gave all the money back and they gave it to the authorities. And the poor Susu lady, the landlord, went to the authorities and found out that some very nice kids very nice children brought the money back <laughs> because we were just such good citizens, right? So dreams have a purpose. And certainly can make you know, okay, there is a God and he can't tell somebody what's going on and they don't have, they, they don't have to know, but, if he, but he can do that. And by the way, you are in that type of church. You are in that type of church or he can. And if he wants to, he tells. If he doesn't, he, just, he, he, he keeps it quiet, but he can do that. And don't be surprised when he does. But Nebuchadnezzar is a pagan, and the dream is not sufficient to bring the proper change, nor is elementary sufficient to bring you the type of education that you need to be the proper Christian that you should be. You can't stop in your six and say, well, I, I'm, it's enough. It's not enough. So now God is going to bring him to the next level, beyond dreams now. And... It is, it is a story of the fiery furnace. Now, you know you've heard this, the story of the fiery furnace before. I know that. But I don't want you to look at it as a story of the fiery furnace. That's boring. We already know it. We already heard it. We haven't, we have, we haven't learned anything from it. But suppose you, you began to understand that this is now an increase in teaching. It's different now. It's not just God doing something else. No. It is greater than what he did before. And the dream pales in comparison to what he's going to do next. And the worship that he's going to utter forth is going to be better than the first until the last end. You want, you want, I'll just, let me just have a sneak preview. Let's go to chapter 4 when God finishes with Nebuchadnezzar. Let's go to chapter 4. So in chapter 4, what does God do to, to uh, chapter 4? Chapter, yeah, 4, eh? So chapter 3 he does it. Then chapter, chapter 2 he deals with him. Chapter 3 he goes higher. Chapter 4 he goes higher again. <laughs> so my sister Batha, <laughs> in chapter 4, which we, we get there when we get there, God is going to turn him into an animal. 
Handsome Jaren, nice hair. He used to have big fro, curls everywhere. Handsome boy. Jaren, God is going to make your nails grow long. You'll grow feathers. And you'll grow beak-like thing. And you'll fall on the ground like some kind of animal. And you shall eat grass. <laughs> Can you imagine God transforming that boy into an animal? And making him run around the place like a wild animal? And he knows that it's God that's done it to him, but he can't undo it. Hmm. The mighty, glorious King Nebuchadnezzar. He's like, God's like, don't play with me, man. Let me show what I can do. I can turn you into a bird-like creature. So after God releases him now, because now he's realizing not only can, <laughs> can, can God save, he can also destroy Himself, he can, he, can, he can do whatever he wants to do. When he gets to that point now, and, and God's teaching him, I am not like the other gods. There is none like and unto me. Can we sing it? There is none like you. Mm -hmm, Lord, no one. Oh, tell him again, Lord. I could search for all eternity long. And still I, Lord, there. there like well, that's beautiful when you sing it like that. But imagine Nebuchadnezzar saying, There are lots like you. You're not the only one that does the things that you do. I know, I know. I just, I'm a lyricist. <laughs> if I just went down to another nation. I would find another like you. And God's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, my praise is, you understand what I'm saying? We sing alone, God, Jesus, there's none like you. You are it. Well, that's how God wants to be worshipped, not like you're the God of gods and there are other gods. And now he's going to go make himself a golden image that everybody got to worship. Because as you go down, and next week I'm going to talk about compromise and the power of pressure to compromise with the world. I want to talk about that. But, listen, but look, look in chapter 4. Listen, listen what happens to him at the end. When God finally finished with Nebuchadnezzar. Verses 34 says this. <laughs> Verses 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass like a donkey. Yeah. And his body was, was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. <laughs> and, his nail, and his nails like bird's claws. Can you imagine that? <laughs> hey, Your wife is going to be running away. Brother Regan, you look like that, your wife is going to... Everyone's going to abandon you. Alone in the forest every night. Brother George, alone in the bush every night. You hear wild coyotes... Everyone wants to kill you, hunt you, and God leave it at that for a few months? Hey, that's a, that's a Yahweh University, man. He teaches you some rough lessons there. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, you said I was the God of God. Eat like an oxen. Nebuchadnezzar, you said that I was liking unto the other gods, and I'm just one of them. Mm -mm. You need to get educated in my uni. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. <laughs> He's got his doctorate, PhD now. Fully graduated. He's got a certificate. And mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is everlasting. Dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor, my brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my Lord sought after me, and I was established in my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor. 
The what? <laughs> my sister, all by himself. He has graduated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the professor is like, very good. You got an A on that one now. <laughs> the king of heaven, not the god of God. <laughs> <laughs> if one and one alone I'll teach it to you if I need to my way is hard and all whose works are truth and his ways and judgment though that walk in pride he is able to abase but notice that his worship has now changed to a singular being because God has grabbed his attention he begins to realize he's, he's different I gotta stay humble before him you see in, in Yahweh University you stay humble in Yahweh University, you know, you know, you know them pride preachers. You know what a pride preacher is. A pride preacher would not wear shoes like these to church, brother George. And you know, I gotta, I gotta wear something sharp, man. You know, something. Mm. You know, I gotta. Even tonight, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta dress up and uh, look nice. And you, you gotta see my fancy car out the front. And you gotta, you know. And and my robe and 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 wow, just I mean, just look. It's only a few people here. It, we have a large group of people here, but to them, a, a fan, that, that's not enough. It's like an insult to preach to 100 people. It's an insult to preach to 200 people. Don't invite them to come to your church. Don't invite a, 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 one of them fancy preachers and pride preachers. If, if, if there are not a few thousand people there, don't bring them. Do you really think T.D. Jakes would come and preach here? I ask you a question. Do you think T.D. Jakes would come preach here? Why not? And I wouldn't invite him. Because he has not gone to Yahweh University. Sorry, who is Jesus? Clearly tell me, preacher. Who is he? One of the beings? No, no, no. He is God in heaven, robed in flesh. God from heaven went back up to his throne. That, that, that man who came to earth is going to sit on the throne and judge you. And when you sit in his throne, you're going to say, I am at the throne of God. And he shall forever shine and give light unto the earth forever and ever, for he is God. I learned that at Yahweh University. <laughs> Can we just finish up here? And then I'm done. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Maybe I shouldn't do too much talking when I begin. But sometimes you got to warm up a little bit. You know, it's been a nice day. I'm in a good mood. I am, I, Brother George, I am a kid at heart. I am a kid at heart. I'll never stop being a kid at heart. Never, never have I ever stopped being a kid of heart, neither will I ever do it. I always said to people, if you want a, a, a do I do my job? Yes. Do it well? well? I think so. I do it very well. But I remain a kid at, at heart. I, I'm always going to be that. If you want a more <clears throat> well put together preacher, I heard <laughs> that down in, um, in um, Belmont, there's another church down there that you can visit. You know. Another, another more prestigious pastor. You okay with me? You okay with John the Baptist wearing his loincloth in the wilderness? What a, what a way for God to send him into university. Visit John the Baptist eating wild locusts and honey in a loincloth in the wilderness. But guess who he was? He was Elijah. Hey, come to earth. He was, he was a fulfillment of prophecy. Yahweh University has all kinds of different cool things out there. I'm going to teach you as much as I can. And at the end of it, I, at the end of it, somebody has to graduate to become the pastor. And when you graduate to become the pastor, I, without any grudge whatsoever, I take the key and I come to the next pastor and I said, open your hands up. Don't get out. I said, here is the keys. Run the church <laughs> as you should. And I walk away. And you better preach. Justin, if you're the next pastor, you better preach. Because I'm coming every Sunday, I'm old, I'll be sitting in the back of church, and you better preach. And if you can't preach, I'm going to say, you can't preach! <laughs> I used to, when I first began preaching, Tammy, is that true or not? When I first began preaching, I used to drive home. On the way home, I was like, Tammy, how was it? And she goes, mm -hmm. I'm like, Brother George, when your wife is going like, oh, you know, that's, that's, that's cruel, man. 
<laughs> I better go seek the Lord a bit more. <laughs> Brother Benny, I did. I had to go and talk to God some more. It's like, Lord, please. She's honest. It wasn't, it wasn't. I remember when um, Tamara's father used to bring me to church. And he said, come on, come to church. And he would go there and it would be like this awful message. Oh, just horrible. I think they were playing. Uh, there was a, there was, remember, that, remember that song? Money, money, money. Remember that? It's always sunny. Remember that, remember that message, Sash? And we were, I was there for that. In the rich man's. He was like, he asked, he's like, Rob, I'm so sorry. It was awful. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. But if, if you come next week, I'm sure it's... A, <laughs> It'll be a lot better. Week after, it's like, wow, that was bad. You know, like, <laughs> hey, you can't preach, okay? You can't preach. Get off, the, get off the pulpit. Whoever is the next pastor of the church must be able to preach. When you come to a pulpit, you're no longer Robert. Something else takes over your brain, and you're not yourself for a very short period of time. Sometimes you are yourself, but for the most part, your brain is just infused with another sense of someone else in your head that's looking through your eyes and talking to the people. And you have to be able to do that. And then you have, you have no problem with preaching. Preaching is easy then. Because it's just something else that's doing it for you, not you yourself. Two seconds. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three scores cubits and the breadth thereof was six cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Chapter, chapter 3, verses 1. I'm not done here. Then Nebuchadnezzar sent together together the prince of the governors and the captains of judges and treasurers and counselors and sheriffs and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of his God, which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. <laughs> so now we're, now we see what we're doing now. Now we're setting the proper scenery that he has done something very wrong because he should have learned something about God at that point, which he did not learn. So now he's got to go a little bit higher now. And now he's got to go, just to rise to our feet, now he's going to go to the next level, and God is going to use that to teach him. Open my eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Reach out and touch it and say that we love it. Oh, yeah, Lord. Open our ears, Lord. Oh, God, and help us. One more time, say, Lord, please open our eyes, open our eyes, Jesus. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch. We want to see Jesus. The king's eyes were not open yet. Everybody believes in God. Every religion has a God. 
Every nation has many gods. They worship this god in this country. They worship that god in that country. They worship another god in another country. They all have their gods. There are tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of gods. And everybody can make a god out of their own selves and out of their own riches. There are so many gods. And the, and the world has a lot of faith. Lots of people are, are worshipping in this religion and billions are worshipping in that religion. And they're bowing down to statues in, 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 in cathedrals and, and, they're, and, they're, and they're praying to black boxes in, 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 the, in the mosque. And, 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 they, and uh, when, when, they, when they go to, to Mecca and they, and they walk around, they do all their different things by the, by the millions and millions. There are people who believe in God. So when Nebuchadnezzar said, you are the God of gods, you don't accept that glory. Your, your praise has to be more refined than that. And you do not take praise that comes without understanding. For then when a man worships a, 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 an idol, you would take that praise. But the devil does that. And you said, those that sacrifice things unto idols, they sacrifice them unto devils. And because when you sacrifice to an idol, or you bow to an idol, or you pray to an idol, or you pray to something false, you are praying to the devil that established it. You refuse to be a part of any worship that is not pure. So tonight we have come because we want our worship to be pure. Nebuchadnezzar gave you a worship, but his worship was not pure, for in his mind, in his heart, he still had this concept of gods. And the next chapter, he went and built a god. And Israel walked back into the land of Egypt because of their gods that they made. And they made two golden calves, and they said, these are your gods. How can it be, Lord? Because they had not graduated from Yahweh University, even though you had shown them so much, but yet they were slow of heart to understand and to learn. And they lost out because they could not graduate. And when you brought them to the promised land, and when you showed them the blessings that were there, they lost out because they could not graduate because they had not developed faith to know that you're bigger than the giants in the land. You're bigger than the problem that they face. And so many people that are in our church, Lord, even myself at times, we oftentimes, God, see you as equal to the problem and not realize that you actually said to Joe, where are you? Where are you? You, you're comparing me to your problem as though we are somehow equal. But if I'm doing that, I'm no different from Nebuchadnezzar, Lord. I'm no different from the heathens. You're not equal to my problem. You're God. There wouldn't even be a problem if you hadn't made the world. If you, you're, not, you're not out of control. Everything is that you're sovereign over everything. And Nebuchadnezzar had to learn that he's not only sovereign over the fire and he's not only sovereign over his servants, but he's sovereign over the great king as well. And he can turn the king into what? And when Nebuchadnezzar learned that, his worship was purged and purified. And he brought forth the praises of Yahweh in the way that he should. And oftentimes we're going through the things we're going through so we can learn to just worship Yahweh as Yahweh. And you who are Yahweh, we just call you by your name, Jesus. Because how can Yahweh be the, be the name? Yes, the Old Testament, they, they, they call you Jehovah and they, they call you different things. Uh, but, but you said that you've not given us a name that's above every other name. I'm just, a, I'm just identifying you, Jesus, as that Yahweh. But how many people fail to realize that that Jesus, because he was so much like a man, because he was born like a baby, but the, but the angel from heaven was not fooled. They have graduated Yahweh University. And the angel from heaven said, he said, to fulfill the prophecy, his name shall be called Emmanuel, for he is the fulfillment of the word. And, the, and it's, it's, it's interpreted to mean God with us. So they had no problem. For you said, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, you said, let all the angels of God worship him. They had no problems worshiping you. But everybody who has not graduated from Yahweh University, <laughs> they will not worship you. They'll worship everything else, but the angels are worshiping you, Jesus. For there was one man upon the throne, and they worship that one man, who was and is and is to come. And I, I only want one that's coming again, and that's Jesus. God shall come as Jesus. And God came as Jesus, and they crucified him. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And you brought them to that mountain and they graduated there. They graduated there. 
And they said, Lord, we thought Elijah was supposed to come first. They graduated there. And they said, shouldn't Elijah have come first? <laughs> and then you, you opened up their mind and said, Elijah has already come. They've already done what they want to do with him. They understood you were God when they came down from the mountain. But Philip wasn't there, so he asked a question. Show me the uh, he, was, he didn't see the glory, but everybody shall see you in your glory, Lord. Nobody's going to say to you that you're just a son. They will understand that what it means to be the son, for the son is the image of the, of the one that we cannot see. For he, Jesus, you are the image of the invisible God. Oh, I'm praying today like a man who has graduated from Yahweh University. And if I've not graduated, Lord, and you've got a whole lot more to teach me, I'm ready to learn. I want to be the student at the front of the, of, of, of the class, Lord. I want to be that geeky guy in the front, Lord, with a big smile on his face, just absorbing everything you've got to say. God, I want to learn about you, and the more I learn about you, I want to teach it to everybody else. Amen. And along the way, there is pain and there is suffering, because sometimes we take such a long time to learn. And oftentimes, pain becomes the only way that we learn to humble ourselves and to let you be God and we be man. But we will learn, and we will graduate, and you will save us from our sins, and you will give us what we need in our time of need. And for all things, we give you thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Were you before the throne? No. Were you before the throne? No. Say, say we're, before, were you before the throne? Yes. Everybody say, I was before the throne. That's how we see. When you graduate, you understand. When you close your eyes, church, when you, when you close your eyes and you pray, that's where you are. You are a bomb. You are, you, I got my eyes closed. I'm not seeing anybody. When you are in the throne, when you are in, 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 a, in, in a spiritual state of worship, your worship is not just going into the building. Your worship is in heavenly places. And we are seated with him in heavenly places. Get the faith to understand that. Grow in your understanding. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.